Hi, my name is Kyle Courtney, and this is Building LLTDM. Right now, we're going to cover contract and licensing basics. While we heard about copyright and fair use previously, the second step is to determine the details of access to these materials. Many different contracts and agreements govern access to copyrighted materials and define what particular uses a researcher may make of these materials. As we explored a bit in our use case, a strategic question to ask when you're beginning to be involved in a TDM project is, how will you access this material? The answers will vary. Some will access via a library license resource, which is sometimes part of an institutional wide access. Some access might be through public facing websites featuring terms of service. And others might be an individual subscription, which had an agreement that you clicked on to access. Contract law is really about enforcing promises. A contract is a promise or a set of promises for the breach of which the law gives us a remedy or the performance of which the law recognizes in some way as a duty. Licenses are most often granted within the context of that contractual relationship. And often the same words used to create the license are also contained in the same instrument that also memorializes a contract. So a license really is a contract not to sue. For our discussion then, a license or contract is a legal interest created by a, a title holder granting use privileges to some non-title holder. We will use the terms license or contract uh, interchangeably. So as you can imagine, contract and licensing agreements can determine what a TDM researcher can do within legal bounds. Many of us, by the way, will never have to write a contract from scratch. Trust me, this is a good thing. However, I do want to explore the underlying contract and licensing system so that you have some context for the parts of the legal process that makes a contract or license valid. The first is the offer. The offer is where one of the parties made a promise to do some specified action in the future. Second is consideration. This is where something of value is promised in exchange for the specified action or non-action. This can take the form of significant expenditures of money or effort, a promise to perform some service, or an agreement not to do something. Consideration is the value that induces the parties to enter in the contract. Third, we have acceptance. The trick there is that the offer has to be clearly accepted. Acceptance may be expressed through words, deeds, or performance as called for in the contract itself. And the last is mutuality, or as like, like many of us call it, meeting of the minds. It's necessary that the contracting parties had a meeting of the minds regarding the agreement. This means the parties understood and agreed to the basic substance and terms of the contract. Beyond the legal requirements, there are all several contract provisions that are standard. These are pretty obvious, so I'll go over them quickly. For the parties, definitely be sure you're naming the correct parties. And this is a good idea to look for in case you take the permission route or need to contact the right person or party. The publisher, vendor, or database might have one name, but the legal party to the contract, the corporation or the person that have, has the rights might be listed there under a different name. There are sometimes overviews, and it's a mistake not to at least consider drafting, asking, or included an overview or purpose in your contract. Think of the overview as a chance to tell the parties, or third parties viewing the contract, what the contract is about in a few paragraphs. This could help other users down the road that have to interpret this contract or license. Payment is obviously important, and as stated before, consideration is the formation of the contract, and it can be simple, a payment, for example, and it can be complex. You have to refer to that contract section. Am I paying by schedule? Am I paying quarterly payments or per use payments? This is where this would be listed. The date, which is often overlooked, be sure the date of the execution by each party is included so there'll be a time at which the parties became bound to the contract. And this may be related to when the agreement starts the clock or if it's a limited timeline or subject to renewal based on this particular date. And last, you have signature. It can be digital, it can be physical. Boilerplate clauses that are involved in these contracts are often standard. And most are not typically heavily negotiated, but they are important. Many contract disputes depend on the drafting of boilerplate clauses, such as termination, or the entire agreement, or jurisdiction. Why are they important? Well, most likely, the TDM project you were dealing with 
will have boilerplate language, even if it's a closed or opened license.